Hi guys, I originally made a more in-depth vi video tutorial about this, but it ran into about 30 minutes. And while I realize um, a lot of people say they would like to have a really in-depth knowledge, uh, most people don't have time for it and would just really like to figure out how to do it and then from sort of trial and error and hands-on experience learn from there. So what I'm going to try and do is keep this video tutorial under the 10 minute mark. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to use Playmaker to create virtual buttons for the Euphoria plugin for Unity 3D. If you go on to the Euphoria website, you can download the virtual button package that they have and play around with it. It uses the teapot and basically you change the colors of the teapot around. Now it is all written in C sharp, so for those who you who are not coders, you might get a little bit frustrated. Now the other thing to keep in mind is that I am adding to an existing package, so already on the Playmaker website, you can get the link from above, there is a package currently in the process of being made. It simply tells you about um, if a marker is lost or if it's found. Okay, so you can kind of use it like mouse up, mouse down events. I've done the same thing for the virtual buttons, but there is a couple of steps that you have to do in between. Okay. So what I'll do is I will quickly set up my scene. So I will drag out an AR camera, delete the main camera. I will then drag out an image target. Now the main thing to keep in mind is that the virtual buttons will only work for image targets, they won't work for anything else. Now I'm going to use the stone <coughs> database that I've made which only has the stone image in it. Okay. Now to help you use it, I'll just go top down view. Uh, I'll create a cube. Drag it in. And I'll create a directional light as well. I'll reset the cube and I will scale it way, way down. Cool. And now I'll hit play and make sure that it tracks properly. Cool. So you can see that we have a tracking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to define an area of the image that I want to act as a virtual button. So how we do that is we need to actually center our image target, make sure it's on zero zero in the world coordinates. And then I'm going to use a trick that I came up with, which is using two empty game objects to sort of find the look of that area. So in this case I'm going to create an empty and I'm going to add a halo effect onto it. And I'm going to make that a color that stands out really well, maybe blue. So I'll reset the game object. Might need to scale it up a little bit and possibly change it to maybe a red. Cool. Now this image is that we're using is 247 from left to right. That's defined on the Target Manager's website. Now the way this works is that you would define the area that you want it to be in. So if you were to look at the virtual buttons example under stones and woods in an XML file they actually define the areas so the image is 247 from left to right which means it's positive 128 this way negative 128 that was positive 128.5 okay so it's minus 108 this way it's the first location and 53 pixels from the bottom because basically you have from here is positive in Z this is negative, and then if you cut it in half, it's positive on the right hand side, negative on the left hand side for x. Okay, and literally all you do is you would cut, make a coordinate system based off your marker, and that's positive and negative values. Okay, and then you just plot your dots along that line. Okay, you can do it on the scrap piece of paper if you really wanted to. I just find it handy to have game objects that I can move around on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one, and I'm going to change it to whole value. So I'm going to make this 100, 
and I'm going to make this negative 50. Then I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to drag it down to there. And I'm going to make this one say 50 and I'm going to make this negative 75. That's 500, that's not 50, that's 50. Cool. So now what we have is we have our two empty game objects representing sort of the top left and the bottom right of the thing. And this works exactly like this. So if you were to look on the screen, okay, that's exactly what we're doing. So in the code we'll go shing and create it. Now what we need to do is we have to have our virtual button in there. So what we'll do is we'll drag the virtual button in and then basically we'll move it down. And all we need to do is sort of align that corner into the center and that corner into the center. Okay. So we can do it using that way. Awesome. So that's the button defined. Okay, one thing to keep in note is that you cannot have it within the button because if you have the in the button you get different values. If you have it within the marker, you get different values again. They need to be in the world coordinate system. Okay, and it's based off this center. Okay, so if you have this two hundred pixels that way, um for example so if you had this one 200 pixels to the right and then had everything based off it you're not it's not going to work because it's gone it needs to be zero 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 so once you have the coins then you can move it around and do what you want again another way to do it is to get a scrap piece of paper and just um, plot out the dots that you need okay okay so what you then need to do is you need to go into your stones XML file which I already have open and you just need to plot those lines in okay so I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to copy these bottom two now this slash means to end it that um, there is no more content going into this image target but because we're kind of using virtual buttons which is basic which it's kind of like markers within markers you need to create an image tag and you need to delete that tag at the very end and if you look at the virtual buttons it has a slash at the end now this name yellow I'm going to replace to I'm going to call it bottom left and then all you literally need to do is put in the values so where it says 14 I'm going to replace it with negative 100 and negative 50 So we're currently about 8 minutes in. And this one I'm going to place negative 50 and negative 75. So negative 50, negative 75. Cool. So that's basically the button to find in the image based off those two points. So all you need to do is save it. In your virtual button, you need to copy in the name where it says the virtual button behavior script. You need to have it in there. Otherwise, you will you're going to get errors later on. Okay, it's not showing up now, but you will get errors. So to save time and to make sure you spell it correctly, I always like to sort of copy and paste it in. Okay and then you can paste in the name as well to give you more feedback so you have those two places so these two need to be exactly spelled correctly now the package or the script that I wrote when you import the Euphoria package for Playmaker you'll actually just have prefabs and scripts okay I made another folder called actions which has this script inside of it so all you need to do is click on the virtual button, right click, go add FSM. If you go into actions, at the very bottom there is now a Euphoria tab and it has virtual button behavior script. And you can double click it, which will add it. I'm going to add another state. Okay. 
you can see that basically you can specify a game object or you can use the owner. I always like to have it on the buttons themselves and you have press or released and it will send the event. So I'm going to make two custom events real fast. And this one's going to be button pressed. This one is button released. And that's all there is to it, so it's really, really fast. Okay. And to help us find it, I'm going to create a sphere right inside the cube. I'll reset it, and I will just poke it out a little bit. That will show us basically where the bottom left hand corner is. And you should also be able to see the texture, okay? So now to test it out, I'm going to hit play. I'm going to just pick up the webcam. <coughs> so you can see, there we go. If I click on the button, we can then test it out. So once my hand is over it, you can see my hand is over this side. And that's basically how the button works. Okay? It's exactly like mouse up and mouse down. <coughs> you can change the settings on it a little bit. I just like to leave the default settings. You can change its sensitivity, which is basically how sensitive is it to touch. So how much you, of the button you need to cover. If you do change it in here, as far as I'm aware, you have to change it inside of the XML file as well. So you can see that the button is enabled and it's currently set to low. You can then change these settings yourself. And that's all there is to create an inverter button inside of Playmaker. I hope this helps, and I'll see you guys in the next video.